Hey everyone, Destin Legary here with Lars Bakken. How's it going? It's going great, Lars. So we are actually looking at a new map. What's it called again? Altar of Flame. And a new mode called Survival, right? Yes, that's correct. Why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, the new mode, Survival? Yeah, so Survival uh, firmly sits on our competitive offering. So we have two mood-based playlists now. We have Quick Play and Competitive. Quick play is where you're going to see things like control that you played in the beta. And then in competitive, you're going to see things like uh, obviously countdown, which you've already played in the beta, and then this brand new mode, survival. Uh, we, we very much like to say it's you're signing on the dotted line, you're getting serious, you're getting the people together that can go in and help you win, and survival definitely fits that bill. The, the map that we're looking at today, it looks a lot like the map that Trials of Osiris is on when Glad you know Why don't you yeah. tell us a bit about what's going on here? Yeah, so this is, a, a, again, Vex. Uh, so this takes place on Mercury. The Vex obviously uh, had a lot going on on Mercury. And and what's happening here is is there are some links here to one of our characters that we've mentioned briefly, Osiris, in the past. Obviously the trials that, that you just spoke about in Destiny 1. And so there are some there are some linkages here with this map. Definitely wanted to return to this kind of palette and this kind of feel um, for our competitive offerings. And this this felt like a good sort of return to that space. You'll see there there are a lot of different ways players can attack each other. And survival is really interesting because it is really the spiritual successor to skirmish. If people remember that mode from Destiny One. Uh, very much small team tactics. Uh, it's 4v4 again, like everything else in Destiny 2. And your team shares a pool of lives between them. So each team starts with eight lives, and then as you get killed, it's uh, automatic respawn, and you'll, be, you'll come back in. And once your team is out of lives, you are knocked out for that particular round. And the first team to knock everyone else on, on the other team out earns a single point and the first team that gets to three wins. And how do you force those teams into the encounter? Uh, so that's a great question. We have uh, one power ammo pack that spawns in a central neutral position, um, which we can go find it here if you want to find it. Let's, uh, yeah, let's go, yeah, go straight through here, and then we'll take a right once we get, it's, it's in this central area. Um, we have the uh, HUD disabled right now, but uh, we call it curve. And so if you go straight ahead, and you'll see the power ammo to your right. So this is the centralized location. This is the map. central sort of neutral zone. So uh, both teams spawn on opposite sides of the map. The power ammo shows up. It becomes a huge point of contention. Um, because what we found, if you didn't have something for both teams to fight over, uh, you couldn't force those fights like you were, like you were mentioning. And that ends up. Uh, causing the teams to clash over this central place. So you see people starting to use their their uh, new class abilities like the Titan Barricade and the Warlock's Rift uh, to sort of set up these power locations around the ammo itself to try and control that space. And so that becomes very important. So what are some of the challenges with developing a mode like this? Uh, uh, making it feel fair. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's one of those things that's it's easy to say uh, out loud, but once you start digging into the details, like, you know, we have, um, we have side swapping now in Destiny 2. So you saw that in Countdown, and you'll see that here in Survival as well once you start playing it. Here's our, here's our player number two who's just sitting here on the map waiting. He probably must have been to be, reading those books. <laughs> he's probably reading those books. <laughs> yeah. That's true. Um, Looks like there's a bit of a perch here. Yeah, is this, this a hot spot? Yeah, this is another really great location. Uh, if you hop up onto this, there's this nice flat <coughs> space. Now you're, you know, you're a bit exposed, but you do have on every single side the ability to sort of quick drop down. So yeah, directly where that uh, book that's, reader, that, book exactly, reader. <laughs> that's where our book reader friend is. If you were attacking from that direction, say in a game of control, which one of the control zones is over there near where the candles are. Um, you could you could attack that position and also drop off pretty quickly, and then if you rotate around to your right, um, that's exactly over. Keep rotating. This is over into the area in the curve where the power ammo is. So you end up being able to cover a lot of different places at the same time. And like I said, you are a little exposed, but 
you have the, the ability to drop off the edge on every every side and, and disengage quickly, which is important. So, yeah. so we, yeah, we have things like side swapping, which is super important. So you'll start on one side, the round will end, and then you swap sides. And so maybe, you know, it, it feels like it's easier to attack power from this side, but in reality, we tried to put these things in very central locations that were um, neutral enough for both teams to be able to Neither team from their starting area has like a leg up on the other one, but we still want to keep that, um, keep it uh, feeling fair enough so we, we push the teams back and forth as they, as they win rounds. All right, so are there any secrets or strategies that are optimal on this map? Um, well, I don't know if this is the most optimal, but this is pretty good. If you run straight forward, there's this staircase that allows you to peek and sort of poke into where the power ammo spawns, but not really, so yeah, right where you're facing. The enemy team, if they're over in that area and trying to take power, you can start to attack them. Now you gotta be really careful if you push too far up, uh, it is a, you know, it's a descending uh, staircase and you're not gonna go down as quickly as you would as a drop off, but it can be pretty powerful because it's harder for them to make you out right there. Um, but they can also throw a grenade or do anything to knock you out of that position, but it ends up being pretty powerful to, to keep them off power ammo. What are some of the hot zones on this map? Like you have this lane here and you're the heavy ammo where players kind of go all over the place. Yes, this area we call curve is very, uh, very hot, especially because of the power ammo. You'll actually see if you move to your left a little bit and back up, there's another cut through here, like to your right right now, there's a jump up. And this area ends up being extremely powerful because if one team is, is trying to take power ammo there, you can flank around through and come in behind them. Um, and by the same token, if you go straight ahead now, there's a little area to your left here that cuts through again and could allow you to flank and come behind as well. But by the same token, if you're set up sort of behind where you are, the team that has this area locked down, they could push around either you know out towards the outer part of the map or they could come back through that little circuit hallway and flank you as well. So you have to be really careful at all times when you're playing. Pay attention to your tracker. You know, if you see those red pie wedges lighting up, be very careful. Definitely. Um, one of the things you brought up is uh, working together as a team. Uh, that seems like it's going to be vastly important for this particular meta. Yeah, and, and teamwork is so important in Destiny 2. I think it, that will be the biggest change for people coming between D1 and D2. Uh, D1, you can definitely hold your own a lot easier. In, in D2, we, we push on teamwork. So uh, two people firing on you, if you're by yourself, you are going to get melted instantly. And so you have to be careful. And we've, we've heard from a lot of people internally that are playing, and they they realize that uh, their play style, if it was too aggressive or if they were too lone wolfy, they're having to relearn how they attack these these uh, you know encounters. The, you want to stick with your team because you and your teammate firing are together on a single target. You can take them down so much quicker than you could in than you could in D1. And uh, so being, especially in a mode like survival, being caught by yourself, knowing that you pushed when you shouldn't have pushed, and losing a life for your team is is hugely detrimental. Awesome. When does this mode launch? It launches with Destiny 2, so September 6th. Everyone will be playing it then. Um, until then, the only way they can see it is, is right through here. IGN. All right. Well, if you want to see more about Destiny 2, you can keep it locked right here on IGN. And thank you so much for joining us. Hey, thanks, lives. Dustin. Of course. Thanks for watching this IGN First on Destiny 2. If you like Destiny, be sure to check out Fireteam Chat, our weekly Destiny show that airs Fridays at 5. And don't forget to come back and check out more IGN First coverage on Destiny 2.